artisans for building the tabernacle. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, indeed, I have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan. And I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans, that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tabernacle of meeting, the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is on it and all the furniture of the tabernacle, the table and its utensils, the pure gold lampstand with all its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of a burnt offering with all its utensils, and the lever and its base, the garments of ministry, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister as priests and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place. According to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. The Sabbath Law and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day he shall surely be put to death. Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of testimony, tablets of stone, written with the finger of God. The Gold Calf now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. For us, for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, 
your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go get down, for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of, I give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain, and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand. The tablets were written on both sides. On the one side and on the other they were written. Now the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they showed it, he said to Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. But he says, it is not the noise of the shout of victory, nor the noise of the cry of the feet, but the sound of singing I hear. So it was, as soon as he came near the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. So Moses' anger became hot, and he cast the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf which they had made, burned it in the fire, 
and ground it to powder, and he scattered it on the water and made the children of Israel drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, What did these people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them? So Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord become hot. You know the people that they are set on evil. For they said to me, Make us gods that shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And I said to them, Whoever has any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me, and I cast it into the fire, and this calf came out. Now when Moses saw that the people were unrestrained, for Aaron had not restrained them to their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let every man put his sword on his side, and go in and out from entrance to entrance throughout the camp and let every man kill his brother, every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. So the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and about three thousand men of the people fell that day. Then Moses said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, that he may bestow on you a blessing this day. For every man has opposed his son and his brother. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses said to the people, You have committed a great sin. So now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, these people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a god of gold. Yet now if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book which you have written. And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Now therefore go, lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit for punishment, I will visit punishment upon them for their sin. So the Lord plagued the people because of what they did with the calf which Aaron made. The command to leave Sinai. Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it. And I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, and the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. And when the people heard this bad news, 
they, mur they mourn, and no one puts on his ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. I could come into your midst in one moment and consume. Now therefore take off your ornaments that I may know that that I may know what to do with you. So the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Horeb. Moses meets with the Lord. Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting which was outside the camp. So it was, whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle, that all the people rose, and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, when Moses entered the tabernacle, that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. And he will return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. The Promise of God's Presence Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, Please, show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, 
but my face shall not be seen. Moses makes new tablets, and the Lord said to Moses, Cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. So be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. And no man shall come up with you, and let no man be seen throughout all the mountain. Let neither flocks nor herds feed before that mountain. So he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. Then Moses rose early in the morning and went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. So Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Then he said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us, even though we are a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us as your inheritance. The covenant renewed, and he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all your people I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord. For it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Observe what I command you this day. Behold, I am driving out from before you the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going. lest it be a snare in your midst. But you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and cut down their wooden images, for you shall worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous god. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they play the harlot with their gods and make sacrifice to their gods. And one of them invites you and you eat of his sacrifice, and you take of his daughters for your sons, and his daughters play the harlot with their gods and make your sons play the harlot with their gods. You shall make no molded gods for yourselves. The feast of unleavened bread you shall keep. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you, in the appointed time of the month of Abib. For in the month of Abib you came out from Egypt. All that 
open the womb or mine, and every male firstborn among your livestock, whether ox or sheep. But the firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lame. And if you will not redeem him, then you shall break his neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem. And none shall appear before me empty hands. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and in the harvest you shall rest, and you shall observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Three times in the year all your men shall appear before the Lord, the Lord God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before you, and enlarge your borders. Neither will any man covet your land when you go up to appear before the Lord your God three times in the year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, nor shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left until morning. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring to the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write these words, for according to the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. The Shining Face of Moses Now it was so, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain. That Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Sabbath Regulations Then Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said to them, These are the words which the Lord has commanded you to do. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh day shall be a holy day for you, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire throughout your dwellings on the Sabbath day. 
offerings for the tabernacle. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, badger skins and acacia wood, oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the apod and in the breastplate. Articles of the Tabernacle All who are gifted artisans among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle, its tent, its covering, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its sockets, the ark and its poles with the mercy seat and the wheel of the covering, the table and its poles, all its utensils, and the showbread, also the lampstand for the light, its utensils, its lamps, and the oil for the light the incense altar, its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, and the screen for the door at the entrance of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its bronze grating, its poles, all its utensils, and the lever and its base, the hangings of the court, its pillars, their sockets, and the screen, or the gate of the court, the pegs of the tabernacle, the pegs of the court and their courts, the garments of ministry for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons to minister as priests. The tabernacle offerings presented and all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred, and everyone whose spirit was willing, and they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting, for all its service and for the holy garments. They came both man and woman as many as had a willing heart, and brought earrings and nose rings, rings and necklaces, all jewelry of gold, that is, every man who made an offering of gold to the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat's hair, red skins of rams, and badger skins brought them. Everyone who offered an offering of silver or bronze brought the Lord's offering. And everyone with whom was found acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. All the women who were gifted artisans spoon yarn with their hands and brought what they had spun of blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred with wisdom spun yarn of goat's hair. The rulers brought onyx stones, and the stones to be set in the apod and in the breastplate, and spices and oil for the light, for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord. All the men and women whose hearts were willing to bring material for all kinds of work, 
which the Lord by the hand of Moses had commanded to be done. The artisans called by God. And Moses said to the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge and all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of artistic workmanship. And he has put in his heart the ability to teach, in him and Aholiab the son of Ahisamek of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do all manner of work of the engraver, and the designer and the tapestry maker in blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine linen and of the waver, those who do every work and those who design artistic works. And Bezalel and Aholiab and every gifted artisan in whom the Lord has put wisdom and understanding to know how to do all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary shall do according to all that the Lord has commanded. The people give more than enough. Then Moses called Bezalel and Aholiah and every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, everyone whose heart was stirred, to come and do the work. And they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. So they continued bringing to him free will offerings every morning. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing. And they spoke to Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded us to do. So Moses gave a commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done, indeed too much. Building the Tabernacle then all the gifted artisans among them who worked on the tabernacle made ten curtains woven of fine linen and of blue, purple, and scarlet thread. With artistic designs of cherubim they made. The length of each curtain was twenty-eight cubits and the width of each curtain four cubits. The curtains were all the same size, and he coupled five curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he coupled to one another. He made loops of blue yarn on the edge of the curtain on the salvage of one set. Likewise he did on the outer edge of the outer curtain of the second set. Fifty loops he made on one curtain, and fifty loops he made on the edge of the curtain on the end of the second set. The loops held one curtain to another. And he made fifty clasps of gold, and coupled the curtains to one another with the clasps, that it might be one tabernacle. 
he made the curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. He made eleven curtains. The length of each curtain was thirty cubits, and the width of each curtain four cubits. The eleven curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain, that is outermost in one side. And fifty loops he made on the edge of the curtain of the second side. He also made fifty bronze clasps to couple the tent together, that it might be one. Then he made a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red and a covering of badger skins above that. For the tabernacle he made boards of acacia wood, standing upright. The length of each board was ten cubits, and the width of each board a cubit and a half. Each board has two tenons for binding one to another. Those he made for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side. Forty sockets of silver he made to go under the twenty boards, two sockets under each of the boards for its two tenons. And for the other side of the tabernacle, the north side, he made twenty boards, and there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under each of the boards. For the west side of the tabernacle he made six boards. He also made two boards for the two back corners of the tabernacle. And they were coupled at the bottom and coupled together at the top by one ring. Thus he made both of them for the two corners. So there were eight boards and their sockets, sixteen sockets of silver, two sockets under each of the boards. And he made bars of acacia wood, five for the boards on one side of the tabernacle, five bars for the boards on the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle on the far side westward. And he made a middle bar to pass through the boards from one end to the other. He overlaid the boards with gold, made their rings of gold to be holders for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. And he made a veil of blue, purple and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen. It was work with an artistic design of cherubim. He made for it four pillars of acacia wood, and overlaid them with gold, with their hooks of gold, and he cast four sockets of silver for them. He also made a screen for the tabernacle door, of blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen, made by a waver, and its five pillars with their hooks. And he overlaid their capitals and their rings with gold, for their five sockets were bronze. Making the Ark of the Testament then Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits was its length, a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and outside, and made a molding of gold all around it and he cast for it four rings of gold 
to be set in its four corners, two rings on one side and two rings on the other side of it. He made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold, and he put the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to bear the ark. He also made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits was its length and a cubit and a half its height. He made two cherubim of beaten gold. He made them of one piece at the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub at one end on this side and the other cherub at the other end of that side. He made the cherubim at the two ends of one piece with the mercy seat. The cherubim spread out their wings above and covered the mercy seat with their wings. They faced one another. The faces of the cherubim were toward the mercy seat. Making the table for the showbread, he made a table of acacia wood. Two cubits was its length, a cubit its height, and a cubit and a half its height. And he overlaid it with pure gold, and made a molding of gold all around it. Also he made a frame of a hand bread all around it and made a molding of gold for the frame all around it. And he cast for it four rings of gold, and put the rings on the four corners that were at its four legs. The rings were close to the frame, as holders for the poles to bear the table. And he made the poles of acacia wood to bear the table and overlaid them with gold. He made of pure gold the utensils which were on the table, its dishes, its cups, its bowls, and its pitchers for pouring. Making the gold lampstand, he also made a lampstand of pure gold. Of hammered work he made the lampstand its shaft, its branches, its bowls, its ornamental knobs, and its flowers were of the same piece. And six branches came out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of one side, and three branches of the lampstand out of the other side. There were three bowls made like almond blossoms on one branch, with an ornamental knob and a flower, and three bowls made like almond blossoms on the other branch, with an ornamental knob and a flower, and so for the six branches coming out of the lampstand. And on the lampstand itself were four bowls made like almond blossoms, each with its ornamental knob and flower. There was a knob under the first two branches of the same, a knob under the second two branches of the same, and a knob under the third two branches of the same according to the six branches extending from it. Their knobs and their branches were of one piece. All of it was one hammered piece of pure gold. And he made its seven lamps, its wick trimmers and its trays of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold he made it, with all its utensils. Making the altar of incense. He 
He made the incense altar of acacia wood. Its length was a cubit and its wide a cubit. It was a square and two cubits was its height. Its horns were of one piece with it. And he overlaid it with pure gold. Its top, its sides all around, and its horns. He also made for it a molding of gold all around it. He made two rings of gold for it under its molding, by its two corners on both sides, as holders for the poles with which to bear it. And he made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Making the anointing oil and the incense, he also made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices, according to the work of the perfumer. Making the altar of burnt offering, he made the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood. Five cubits was its length, and five cubits its width. It was square, and its height was three cubits. He made its horns on its four corners. The horns were of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the utensils for the altar, the pans, the shovels, the basins, the forks, and the firepans. All its utensils he made of bronze, and he made a grate of bronze network for the altar, under its rim, midway from the bottom. He cast four rings for the four corners of the bronze grating, as holders for the poles, and he made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. Then he put the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar with which to bear it. He made the altar hollow with boards, making the bronze lever. He made the lever of bronze and its base of bronze from the bronze mirrors of the serving woman who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting, making the court of the tabernacle. Then he made the court on the south side. The hangings of the court were of fine woven linen, 100 cubits long. There were 20 pillars for them with twenty bronze sockets. The hooks of the pillars and their bands were silver. On the north side the hangings were one hundred cubits long, with twenty pillars and their twenty bronze sockets. The hooks of the pillars and their bands were silver. And on the west side there were hangings of fifty cubits with ten pillars and their ten sockets. The hooks of the pillars and their bands were silver. For the east side the hangings were fifty cubits. The hangings of one side of the gate were fifteen cubits long, with their three pillars and their three sockets, and the same for the other side of the court gate. On this side and that were hangings of fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and their three sockets. All the hangings of the courts all around were of fine woven linen. The sockets for the pillars were bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their bands were silver, and the overlay of their capitals was silver. And all the pillars of the court had bands of silver.
The screen for the gate of the court was woven of blue, purple and scarlet thread and of fine woven lining. The length was 20 cubits and the height along its width was 5 cubits, corresponding to the hangings of the court. And there were four pillars with their four sockets of bronze. Their hooks were silver, and the overlay of their capitals and their bands was silver. All the pegs of the tabernacle and of the court all around were bronze. Materials of the tabernacle. This is the inventory of the tabernacle, the tabernacle of the testimony, which was counted according to the commandment of Moses for the service of the Levites by the hand of Itamar, son of Aaron the priest, Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord had commanded Moses. And with him was Aholiab, the son of Ahisamek, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and designer, a waver of blue, purple and scarlet thread, and of fine line. All the gold that was used in all the work of the holy place, that is, the gold of the offering, was twenty-nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver from those who were numbered of the congregation was one hundred talents and one thousand seven hundred and seventy-five shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. A bekach for each man that is half a shekel, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. For everyone included in the numbering from twenty years old and above, for six hundred and three thousand, five hundred and fifty men, and from the hundred talents of silver were cast the sockets of the sanctuary and the bases of the veil. 100 sockets from the 100 talents, one talent for each socket. Then from the 1,775 shekels he made hooks for the pillars, overlaid their capitals and made bands for them. The offering of bronze was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. And with it he made the sockets for the door of the tabernacle of meeting, the bronze altar, the bronze grating for it, and all the utensils for the altar, the sockets for the court all around, the bases for the court gate, all the pegs for the tabernacle, and all the pegs for the court all around. making the garments of the priesthood of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, they made garments of ministry for ministering in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron as the Lord had commanded Moses, making the ephod. He made the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven line, and they beat the gold into thin sheets and cut it into threads to work it in with the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine linen into artistic designs. They made shoulder straps for it to couple it together. It was coupled together at its two edges and the intricately woven band of his epod that was on it was of the same workmanship, 
woven of gold, blue, purple and scarlet thread and of fine woven lining, as the Lord had commanded Moses. And they set onyx stones and closed in settings of gold. They were engraved as the signets are engraved with the names of the sons of Israel. He put them on the shoulders of the apot as memorial stones for the sons of Israel as the Lord had commanded Moses, making the breastplate. And he made the breastplate artistically woven like the workmanship of the apot of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and of fine woven linen. They made the breastplate square by doubling it, a span was its length and a span its width when doubled. And they set in it four rows of stones, a row with a sardius, a topaz, and an emerald was the first row, the second row a turquoise, a sapphire and a diamond, the third row a jacinth, an agate and amethyst, the fourth row a burial, an onyx and a jasper. They were enclosed in settings of gold in their mountings. There were twelve stones according to the names of the sons of Israel, according to their names, engraved like a signet each one with its own name according to the twelve tribes. And they made chains for the breastplates at the ends like braided cords of pure gold. They also made two settings of gold and two gold rings and put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two braided chains of gold in the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. The two ends of the two braided chains they fastened in the two settings and put them on the shoulder straps of the apples in the front. And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate, on the edge of it, which was on the inward side of the apple. They made two other gold rings and put them on the two shoulder straps underneath the apple towards its front, right at the seam above the intricately woven band of the apple, and they bound the breastplate by means of its rings to the rings of the apple with a blue cord, so that it would be above the intricately woven band of the apple, and that the breastplate would not come loose from the apple as the Lord had commanded Moses. Making the other priestly garments, he made a robe of the apple of woven work, all of blue, and there was an opening in the middle of the robe, like the opening in a coat of mail, with a woven binding all around the opening, so that it would not tear. They made on the hem of the robe pomegranates of blue, purple and scarlet, and of fine woven linen. And they made bells of pure gold, and put the bells between the pomegranates on the hem of the robe all around between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, all around the hem of the robe to minister it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. They made tunics, artistically woven of fine linen, for Aaron and his sons, a turban of fine linen, exquisite hats of fine linen, short trousers of fine woven linen, and a sash of fine woven linen with blue purple and scarlet thread, 
made by a waiver, as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then they made a plate of the holy crown of pure gold, and wrote on it an inscription like the engraving of a signet, Holiness to the Lord, and they tied to it a blue cord, to fasten it above on the turban, as the Lord had commanded Moses. The work completed. Thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished, and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so they did. And they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its furnishings, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its sockets. The covering of ram skins dyed red, the covering of badger skins, and the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony with its poles, and the mercy seat, the table, all its utensils, and the showbread, the pure gold lampstand with its lamps, the lamps set in order, all its utensils, and the oil for light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, the screen for the tabernacle door, the bronze altar, its grate of bronze, its poles and all its utensils, the laver with its base, the hangings of the courts, its pillars and its sockets, the screen for the court gate, its cords and its specks, all the utensils for the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting, and the garments of ministry, to minister in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and his son's garments, to minister as priests. According to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did all the work. Then Moses looked over all the work, and indeed they had done it, as the Lord had commanded, just so they had done it, and Moses blessed them. The tabernacle erected and arranged. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put in it the ark of the testimony, and partition of the ark with the whale. You shall bring in it the table, and arrange the things that are to be set in order on it, and you shall bring in the lamp stand and light its lamps. You shall also set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony, and put up the screen for the door of the tabernacle. Then you shall set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. And you shall set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, and put water in it. You shall set up the courts all around, and hang up the screen at the court gate. And you shall take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and you shall hallow it and all its utensils, and it shall be holy. You shall anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all its utensils, and consecrate the altar. The altar shall be most holy, and you shall anoint the laver and its base and consecrate. 
Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and wash them with water. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priest. And you shall bring his sons and clothe them with tunics. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father, that they may minister to me as priests. For their anointing shall surely be not be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus Moses did, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he did. And it came to pass in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was raised up. So Moses raised up the tabernacle, fastened its sockets, set up its boards, put in its bars, and raised up its pillars. And he spread out the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent on the top of it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark, inserted the poles through the rings of the ark, and put the mercy seat on top of the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle, hung up the veil of the covering, and partitioned off the ark of the testament, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the table in the tabernacle of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tabernacle of meeting, across from the table, on the south side of the tabernacle. And he lit the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the gold altar in the tabernacle of meeting in front of the veil, and he burned sweet incense on it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He hung up the screen at the door of the tabernacle, and he put the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and offered upon it the burnt offering and the grain offering as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, and put water there for washing. And Moses, Aaron, and his sons would wash their hands and their feet with water from it. Whenever they went into the tabernacle of meeting, and when they came near the altar, they washed as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he raised up the cords all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the screen of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. The Cloud and the Glory Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting, because the cloud rested above it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and fire was over it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel, throughout all their journeys.